death, that moment when our vital functions give out and life comes to an end. It's a Mr. Death or something. He's come about the reaping. I don't think we need any at the moment. Hello. It's the unavoidable fate we all share. God, how can, how can you just one day vanish? We can't avoid the inevitable. But what if we could learn enough about death to extend our life expectancy? What if we could trade a painful week decline for vigorous golden years? The lab is actually divided up into two parts. Nicholas Straustrup is starting to unlock some of the secrets of life and death at Harvard Medical School. But instead of people, he studies worms called C. elegans. They're microscopic worms about as long as your fingernail is thick. Straustrup can track tens of thousands of worms at once, right to their moment of death. We actually scan one column every 15 minutes, and so each individual gets uh, captured every hour. He puts them in hundreds of petri dishes, which he loads onto 50 scanners. The scanner is taking a picture from the bottom as the worms hang, suspended by uh, surface tension. So once you put together all these scanners and computing power and so on, what do you call it? We call it the lifespan machine. It seemed uh, a little bit more optimistic than the death machine. <laughs> The reason why we built the lifespan machine was we wanted to do very large experiments and, uh, involving lots of animals. And when you have lots of animals, you can start looking very carefully at uh, the range of lifespans you get. If you wanted to study human lifespan this way, you'd need centuries to gather enough data. But C. elegans takes much less time to die. They live about two weeks on average, but they're made out of a lot of the same parts as we are. So we're a lot like the worms? Uh, in many ways. Like how? At the cellular level, um, they have to solve a lot of the same problems as we do. They have to eat and use that to gain energy, and they have to move around their environment and explore it. To track their movements, a scanner takes a photo every 15 minutes. In early adulthood, the worms are very active. But as they grow older, they put on fat, they eat less, and they move slower and slower. And then when they die is the time where they make their final head movement. The final nod. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it sounds quite sad. <laughs> All of the worms in the lifespan machine are genetically identical, and they live in identical conditions. But they don't all die at the same time. Some live less than average, and others live longer. Exactly how long a worm lives is random. If you chart how many worms are still alive at any given time, you end up with a curve. Every time Straustrup runs this experiment, he gets the same curve. You're getting the same amount of spread in lifespan from animals living on the same plate, eating the same food in the exact same environment. So maybe it, a lot of it is the roll of the dice? Obviously genetics has a huge role to play in how long an animal will live, but there's always going to be a spread around whatever that typical lifespan is for a population, and that spread does not seem to be uh, driven by genetics. Then Straustrup used the lifespan machine to change the lifespan of the worms. He shortened their life in one experiment by heating up the scanners. The worms still had a spread of lifespans, but their curve was scrunched down to a shorter time. In another experiment, Straustrup inserted a mutation into the DNA of the worms that's known to double their lifespan. The worms still live to a range of lifespans, but a longer range. It's like he stretched their curve out. Everything we looked at had exactly the same effect, and it started getting a bit cosmic. That, that is pretty cosmic. With each experiment, Straustrup and his colleagues aren't alterating just one isolated part of the worm's biology. Instead, they now believe they are changing the whole system every time. So exactly where you're affecting the aging uh, process uh, molecularly uh, doesn't matter so much because it's going to have the same consequence in the overall dynamics of the system. Straustrup hopes that his research on worms will give new clues for understanding human aging. It might even change the way we try to extend our own lifespan. Does this kind of change how you think about life and death? Yeah, I, I think that how long I live is going to be, to a large degree, a um, uh, throw of the dice. Um, and that, you know, exercising and eating well probably will make my life better. Um, but the effect on how long I live will be fairly modest, which kind of takes the pressure off a little bit. Now if you'll excuse me, I'm dead. What's it like? Uh, what's it like? Uh, you know the chicken at Tresky's restaurant? Yeah. It's worse. <laughs>